So let me let me give you guys a bit of a background. So please, first of all, type in your stuff so I can just pin it, Adria, because you know my emotions right now are what really, am I really typing? high. Type what in am your I um, type in type in your Instagram and what we're discussing. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So um, my heart. The... No, type please type whatever the fuck you want to type in this bitch. This is where we at. This is a real at the revolution. <laughs> We not playing. Oh I'm not playing. Supposed- like we not. We playing. are not playing. This is what. Ah! I love you. I feel like. Like what? What? Like what? Okay. So what? tell us. Tell us about hey, so if y'all. Hey, Randy, come on. So Adrian, tell them who you are and what the fuck is going on. That's. That's where we at. Tell them who you are. Okay. And well. What's going on. Some. Of- <laughs> well, I'm Adria. Um, I'm a trauma informed yoga mindfulness practitioner. I've been teaching in quarantine since like March 15th. Yeah. Span of time, we've lost a hundred thousand plus human beings, and also right. in the same exact amount of time, lost a number of Black and Brown people. And so it just is very overwhelming. And um, honestly, th- this week was not hard for me, but it was heavier than usual for me and I just feel like at this point like you either are with or against it like I feel like there's no middle ground to play ever when it comes down to like people's lives and like humanity you know and I I got on a call a couple like a week or two back with um Lululemon and you know the conversation didn't start off like even checking in on like the ambassador checking in on how we were, like we're on unemployment, we've lost our studios, we lost things, you know, and the conversation, you know, started off talking about the stores, you know, and, and then we, we keep losing our brothers and our sisters, like on a regular basis. And I feel like large conglomerates, I feel like large platforms, specifically rooted in mindfulness, this is what I want to get across. I'm not asking motherfucking Tyson chicken to make a a statement about brown and black people. I'm just saying that as a mindfulness brand, yoga means to connect. Yoga means to literally end separation. Like it means to connect. And that is what your company is rooted in. And you don't say anything, you don't, not even a statement. Someone asked me in my comments, what would I have liked to see? A statement, a story post, I'm sorry that Brown and black death isn't aesthetically pleasing to you. I'm sorry. But guess what? You have brown and black people in your yoga clothes. And at the end of the day, again, if we're all like this idea of we're all one, if that's true, like, why aren't we actively showing up? A post, a statement. You can donate to the families. You can send an email. This impacts people that wear your clothing, that, that, post about your brand this impacts our lives like this impacted me the same way you're sending emails about covid on a regular fucking basis like say something say something and also if you have a platform of predominantly white people like i want white people to understand like the power they have also to change things you also have the power to change things you had the power to literally create race. You said that it was so, and then it was. So imagine what you could do if you actually like had the courage to go against the grain. And I feel like, okay, if you're not, you're not gonna do it. Like, and I wanted to make it public because I want people to understand that like we can create spaces for brown and black people that are rooted in mindfulness, that support social justice, that support our housing that support that support each other like all i feel right now is this is the opportunity to either be with each other or or not and so i wanted to make it clear and so that's why i posted that so and that's just what it is and i've i've always felt you know a little disconnected i've always felt like an outcast i've always felt like i wasn't palatable i was black enough but i i wasn't palatable my my blackness is not you know it's, 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 my blackness looks different, you know? So it's just tough. It's tough to watch, watch our brother die on camera in such a gruesome, disgusting way. 
and for it not to spark something in someone. And that's, that's what worries me. Well, well it's, it's deeper than that, too, because the, thing, the fact that you don't even think that you should have this conversation, you know, so it, it becomes the part where I don't even think they're aware that these conversations need to be had. So I don't know where, where the lessons begin because, yes, my, my girl said, yes, you, you learn these things at home and these things are learned at home. But then once you transform and make it to the regular world, like, yo, you can't, you can't choice. write this shit. Now, choice. Now, now it's your choice. Now, yeah, now, now you're there's deciding choice. to do this. And now that you out here and you see this, and so your silence, and I'm not asking you know, white people that are against this to, you know, be in the streets and loot. And even, I'm just saying, just, just help us, dog. Yeah. Just fucking help us. Yeah. Like, you know, if you believe in this of any some short, like you have, how are you not saying anything? My, my, my idea is that, you know, I look at inclusiveness. I'm very weary of inclusiveness. Like, I think there are, there are like, literally white people that get offended by spaces that are made for black and brown people but we literally have to make them because what it means to be inclusive is just means to put a black person on the page every once in a while like let's make sure that we're being inclusive but at core value at core value that's all i'm saying is like my relationship even with brands and what i'm trying to do will matter because i'm like I don't know what Lululemon Lemon is thinking about. I don't know what other people think about, but I'm trying to like change the world. Like, in the only way to really think that way is you literally have to do the thing what? that Adrian. makes you cringe. What? Which what is acknowledging no, 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 that listen. racism is fucking real and it's killing us at I an alarming can't. rate. He said, he said, I'm not saying I'm going to be the change, but at least I want to be in the part of sparking the change to change the world. How long ago w was this, you know, and this was saying, so the silence of it all, like there's no more time to be silent. That like this, the silence, yes. the silence is done. Like there, there, there's nothing yeah. more to be silent to. There's, there, there's no more silent protests. There's no more silent marches. There's no more silent emails. We tried or, that. We we've tried asked, that. We've asked. Like, and here's my and thing. Then, Go ahead. No, come listen, on, uh -huh, come Let, on. No, listen. Do you remember that fucking dog they shot? What did you, what? I'm, I'm bringing this up because the black boy shot the fucking dog. Do you remember that? And it was no. his whole, it was a cop dog that they fucking shot. He was running, but he shot the cop dog. And they made this big thing. This was about a year right. or so ago where it was just like, he killed the fucking dog. Oh my God. The officer dog was shot. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This other guy made this shirt. This young black boy like fuck the dog. Right. You know? And then he was getting death threats because he's selling this thing. But we're like, right, you guys are so upset about a fucking dog, dog. My you deepest... upset about a fucking dog, yes. dog. My deepest concern, my deepest concern is that it doesn't spark anything in, in, and I also feel like if you have a large platform, you have more power to invoke change. So I feel like, you know, you can be really passionate about sustainability and like saving the planet and like right. saving everything but black lives. Like that makes me uncomfortable. That makes me uncomfortable. I'm sorry. Like you talk about sustainability, you talk about pride, you talk about, Every, every other thing, every other thing, okay? And then when it comes down to this, it's like, it's not even a statement. It's not even an email. It's not even a like, we stand as a company, we stand against this. I think that now, and like I told Lisa on the phone before we got on this, on this live, I want people to understand this, like, we're all losing right now. We're all taking L's. Now is the time. Like, if you were ever going to speak up about anything is now. Like, while you're taking your L's, you're not making as much money anyways so it couldn't be about money like i don't i don't it's, it's difficult for me to stand behind a brand simply because of I, I mean to be honest with you the core values no longer align like my values have grown they've evolved they and if a company isn't doing that then i have to keep it pushing and also if you if you have access to that many white people to educate them, to make a statement about where you stand, to 
I think you should use that. You should use that. And it hurts my, it hurts my heart that it doesn't happen. And you know what? Like people are like, what did you want to see from them? I'm a yoga instructor. So these are the kind of brands that I interact with. And I'm sorry that when we talk about healing, like this is why I'm real serious about like black and brown people getting their yes. the healing that they deserve, that they're entitled to. Operations on healing, okay? Because we literally, it's almost as if like, yo, there was a barrier between me and yoga at one point. I thought I wasn't allowed to, okay? I thought I wasn't allowed to breathe and move in my own body for so long. And then I finally got it and it changed my life. And now our job is to unlock that in other people of color and black and brown people. We have to unlock, we have to teach y'all literally that you, this is your wellness, this is yours. It belongs to you. And I feel like, you know, like, I'm just not, we just not doing it. When it's 2020. Not I'm not doing it, it the way that everyone thinks it's supposed to be done. I don't care about clothes. I don't care about money no. with clothes. And two, and Lululemon, it's it, it hurt. I'm not even going to say it hurts because it, it doesn't necessarily hurt my feelings. But it's just like, God damn it. You know, like here's, you know, some, another company that we all buy into for the wellness of all. And for, like you said, these core values that, that we think that they all stand for, but they don't. So you really don't give a fuck about us. Yeah. So like, do me a favor. So do me a favor. You don't give a fuck about us. So let me just remove my black face from this. So you can figure out yeah. this shit. And, 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 and then hope and only hope that other um, people of color, black and brown people, will, will understand and will see and will, will take this stance. Because as far as I'm concerned, because of this right now and us having this conversation, and you know how I move, like I ain't, I ain't fucking with Lululemon ever. Like, I'm not buying shit. Like, that's just that's just how I move. And I know, Adria, stay, stay know. with me, okay? Because I still ain't bought no Gucci shit since that whole shit that they did with the... I don't know the... nothing about that designer shit. Okay, listen. So I'm just telling you, this is how I will do that. I still don't go to Fairlane Mall like that because when I was a kid, you know, it was so racist to be at Fairlane, you know, and they would, they would have the police out there. They wouldn't let us commune in circles together. So, like, this is shit that's us. So, I still keep that shit with me in that. So, because yes. of this, I'm telling you that if you, because they didn't speak out, in fact, the fucking jacket, but like, not that I, who am I? Because I'm, it's not like I'm spending all this bunch of money with Lululemon, but I'm the bitch that'll take all my shit and throw it away. That's who I am because I'm not with that shit. And I'm not mm -hmm. rocking it if you're not rocking this. Yeah. And my thing is, like, here's, this is, this is what I want, like, I think it's hard for people to wrap their mind. Like racism is literal, it's poison. Like let's treat racism like COVID-19. Okay, you can easily fucking contract the shit, right? It yes. can kill you. Well, it kills us. Yeah. It kills us. That's the thing. And, and here, this is like, my only thing is like, Nike backed Colin Kaepernick at a level that no motherfucking company could ever, ever level up to. They made it very clear and Nike, Nike didn't lose no checks. Like, Nike didn't lose any checks. You feel what I'm saying? Like, Keep so talking. my thing is it couldn't, it's not, if it's not about money, like, silence is equivalent to, like, you are, you are okay with oppression. Keep talking. Silent, silence is meaning that you are okay with the oppression. Like, you might not say Trump is, is great. You might not come out and also be on the other side, but your silence is new, is neutral. It's like, I have no, it's killing us. You stayed at home. You stayed at home for yourself and for your kids. And that's my thing is when we start talking about wellness brands, because I don't, I don't know about, I don't. So what does about, it mean to be a wellness brand? Let's say that then. Like wellness what does it mean humanity. to be a wellness, wellness brand? Wellness is humanity. Health is humanity. Healing is, that is all rooted in only a human, like only you can, can heal you. Like, and then when we make these spaces, we're saying as a community, we can help each other heal. As, that's what we're saying. That's what we're literally doing and saying, whether we're, that's our mission statement or our value proposition or not. When you step into wellness for people, you're teaching them how to breathe, get in touch with their bodies. That's revolutionary. That, that alone, like, 
And I, I want people to understand, like, for me, anything that is about community, like, anything that you're, you're yeah. literally promoting that it's about community. It's like, okay, so when yeah. racism is involved, it, it ain't, it's not, you, you don't even post, you don't even post on the dates that this man, his net, his knee is in this man's neck. I literally couldn't, I haven't slept this week. I haven't slept. Like, I haven't rested well. Like, my body has been there lying there and my eyes are closed. But I haven't been resting well. And I feel like it doesn't, it shouldn't take, like, you having to be Black to experience empathy. And my biggest concern is that there's a disease of apathy that is woven into racism, woven into whiteness. And I just feel like now is the time if ever to speak out. And if you don't speak out during a time where your stores are closed, you're not making the money. You're not making the, I'm sorry, but like, you're not even, that's the part that frustrates me the most was like, you could make a post, a story, you could donate to the families. It's so Listen, simple. Let, so let me, let me tell you something. A long time ago, um, I've I've always had jobs. You have to say this around. shit, by the way. Love you, but right? No, no, I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna make a post right here. But I'm just gonna because I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna make it go live as soon as we done. But um, a long time ago, I worked at marketing research. You know, a marketing research company, and that's my background. And my dad, um, my dad is is mixed, and so he always like was like he's like your color, you know, right. and uh, he always had to be that person to figure it out. And so he put me. He would always put me into these companies. Because, and I was qualified as well, right? With internships and stuff. And I would always tell him, like, it was this one company. I was like, Daddy, it's only, like, three black people here. Like, hundreds of people. It's three black people here, right? And he used to hate that shit. Because he would, you know, go through that with his color. And I'm sure, I don't, I'm sure you have gone through this too. No. It was, the racism came from black people and white people. Right. Because he wasn't black enough. And then he wasn't white. But then he was not black enough. You know, so that's what that was. But with it, when I told him it wasn't there, he went to the CFO of the company and said, hey, you know, you don't have that many black people here. And his response was, you know, I never even thought about it. Yeah. So I that is, thought. I told that whole ass story to say they don't even think about it, Adria. Like, we're, and so then my father said, and that's, that's my the concern. Problem. He told him then, he said, concern. that's the problem. My concern is that, that you don't even thought. think about it. Like that you don't, you don't even think that this would matter to you, that, that, that we don't even matter. Like that you, you can't There's even a bare minimum. No one is asking for you to like campaign, right? Like no one's at like, and again, I'll reiterate, I know it's not aesthetically pleasing. I know black death isn't pleasing for your fee. I know. It's also not pleasing in real fucking life. It's not and this is poison. Real this shit is life. poison. This shit is poison. And I feel like it. I, I stand by the fact that this white people created race. They made it up in their minds. Okay. And then they literally created systems built upon it. Yeah. And now it's clear as day. It's clear as day. I feel like if you can create it, you can destroy it. If you can create it, you can destroy it. But okay, so here's the thing. So they won't, they won't, they won't, they won't make it. So here, this is where we are. If you're just joining us, Adria. Here's um, now, baby. How long were you an ambassador for Lulu? I was going into my fourth year. Like, Adria was going into her month. fourth year um, ambassadorship with Lululemon, and she set that shit down yesterday. Today, well, yeah, actually, yeah, last night. Yes, she said that last night. Yes, and she posted this morning in her yeah. story, and this is why because to have that type of platform and not to even acknowledge, like we can't have a relationship anymore. And so I, no I think point. I think I think that people should know that now too. That that's a lot where most black people stand. Where all the black people that I know is that either, and I'm not saying it's a fight or we got a beef about it, but either you acknowledge and you try to reform and help, or we not cool no more. And yeah, like our core values aren't the same. I wouldn't. We're not being a relationship. taken care of. We can't stay yeah. in a relationship with you if you if if we if we can't have our basic needs met. So even getting deeper, our root chakra needs. These are survival needs. So we don't even have our basic survival needs that we need to survive as a mayor, as a human being or even as animals. We don't even have those basic needs. So they're not even trying to see that our basic needs are met. 
So if you don't care about my basic needs being met, then I cannot have a relationship with you huh. of any sort. This like, is Lula Lemon, here's the thing. Y'all can send me a meditation to my email. You can make a meditation for grief. You can have one of your ambassadors. You can have one of your ambassadors do something for, like, I feel like if it's only, like, if it only is mindfulness and wellness when it comes down to, like, palatable things, things for, like, then it, like, for me, like I said, I can't be in a relationship. I wouldn't be able to be in a relationship with someone I couldn't talk about race with. Like, I wouldn't be able to do that. Like, I wouldn't be able to be in a relationship with somebody or an entity in which I couldn't acknowledge something that is killing us. We have no problem acknowledging the virus. This shit has been going on for, for so like. So wait, so I mean, we say so the the companies then you get you get numerous emails about the coronavirus, right? You yeah, I hope you're doing well. Emails. I've been getting emails from Lululemon about COVID nineteen, about just checking in. Like, here's if you want to run around outside. Here's a, it's like okay, like you know, and and for those of you just joining, like I was on a call with my ambassador team a couple weeks ago, and the call. Did not start off mindfully. And what I mean by mindfulness is starting off by asking people how they're doing during this time. We're studio owners. We're, we're uh, freelancers. We are on unemployment. We've lost a lot. Like, and that was not what the, con the conversation was about, the stores. And then on top of that, um, <laughs> Venus is in retrograde. On top of that, you know, mentions of people's real estate property. I just got three new real estate properties while I'm waiting on my unemployment check. Like, I feel like our core values don't align, my baby. Adrian, like, shut the but fuck also, up. Wait, why wait, did you wait, ask wait, me wait, to be an ambassador wait, then? No, 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 stop. And this That's is what, hold on, this is what I mean. Real estate? Is that what, what you what just said? I mean, said? though, let me get this out real quick. This is what I mean. It's like, why did you ask me to be an ambassador? Why did you ask me? And I think that it's fine. It's fine to, like, the I have my ideas around tokenism, but like I'm a biracial black girl, I'm a light skinned black woman. I feel like I was just black enough, like palatable enough, but they didn't even know who they were asking to be an ambassador. And I feel like that's also they don't see us. They don't see. They don't see the value. And then when shit like George Floyd happens when a person that looks like you has his knee has his knee in this man's neck, literally killing him. Looks just like you. Probably got a daddy that looked like you. I saw myself in that man. I'm half white. I'm able to fucking see it. I'm disgusted. Literally. You don't, you don't feel nothing. Not even enough to make, a, make anything. Anything? An email? A story post? No. Anything. And I'll keep saying it. I'll keep saying it. I'm going to keep saying it because... For me, like I'm heart that that shit broke my heart, and I felt every single heart that it broke on top of it. We're exhausted, like we're like we're. It's so apparent that if you're ignoring it, I don't. I you someone DM me like that didn't that hasn't acknowledged George Floyd talking about. Sorry to hear about your. I deleted it. You're not even getting your messages read because you're not even you're not even thinking about me until I have to come out. And of course, we have to, I got, I've been sat down, I've been sat down by Lululemon about my attitude. I've been well, do you, sat, Tell yeah. me what you mean by that. Tell me what you mean That's by that. That's a microaggression. Attitude. This, this, this is having an attitude, being passionate, being, being strong. Wait, it's microaggression. Because but that's what I'm saying is what? That was during my, that was in my first year of ambassadorship. I, we just wanted to sit you down to, to talk about, yes, y'all. Okay. And, and here's the thing, when I became a Lululemon ambassador in Detroit, people, I heard everything in the city, okay, Tell about me what, it. Talk that shit. What did you hear? I heard everything in the city about it. People didn't know who I was. I had 800 followers on Instagram. No one knew who the fuck this little light-skinned girl was. And I became an ambassador, and I heard people talking. And they didn't even realize, like, these people don't fuck with me. They, they put me on this team because it's just enough. And guess what? That's a black experience as well. That doesn't feel any type of good. And then we believe that tokenism means that we have to advocate to be in the space. More people deserve to be in Lululemon space. No, I think that we deserve our own spaces. I think that we can make clothes that 
fit our titties. I think we can make clothes that fit our titties and look cute. Like I would like for I would like for the back of my motherfucking shit to go long. Listen, and have the same shitty ass design and I, every and single I will time. Say this too, like the pants though, my legs, my thighs are thicker. For the pants, baby, and we so have like, our bone structure, and so this my is where it's funny. So then yeah. I stopped. I literally, I stopped. I did stop buying them. Now back, you know, and I told you because when I was, when I was, uh, when I was, when I was whitewashed in that culture of like Lululemon, I was, I was going because that's what everybody around me was doing. So yeah. that's what I thought. Like, okay, well, I'm a yogi. This is what we do. We go to Lululemon. I go to Lulu. So and I, for a minute, I kept trying to make the pants fit me. Like and, and <laughs> I have to keep pulling my shit up because Adrian, listen, listen, and so. But then even like I, I did a cool thing. Like I did a photo. I did a photo thing like with them, and you know, just and like, okay, here's the pants, and this is nice, and it's cool. But it just they didn't quite fit my legs right. And, and you know what? That's the product, right? Like I don't work at the store, okay? Like I'm not an employee of Lululemon. Lululemon asked me to be on. They came to me. They came and sought me out. So I feel like if you're seeking me out, why? Core values. And that's all Lululemon pushes. If you've ever, if you're ever in the, in the depths of Lululemon, yeah. they talk about core values. That's all that they're ever pushing is this, this idea of core values. And I'm, I'm not here to, to I want to say one thing. I'm not here to like, I'm here to only say the truth, okay, in and, and my experience. And also, I feel like a lot of, we believe that we need these brands. Like, they make us believe that we need them. I thought Lululemon was a, sig a symbol of, like, success, that I had, I had done something, right? But then when I wake up on whatever fucking day it is, and I see George Floyd on, on the road, and I see um, Amy Cooper threatening my brother's life for telling her to put her dog on, I... I I'm like, do I give a fuck about some clout? Oh, no, no I don't. I actually don't. Because no. that's what we can literally, we create clout. That's why they come seek us. And I realized that. That clicked for me. We create clout. That's we create it for seekers. them. We, we create everything. clout. That's yes. why they come seek us. We yoga, create clout. yoga is not a white person's thing it was made by brown people that, dog. Like, yoga was made by brown people say it again man I'm, I'm so tired of this of this shit that people people feel like and then especially us culturally as you know black and brown people african americans whatever like going through it like i'm so tired of the bullshit excuses my body it don't feel right that that don't look right for me that's not okay that's not what the fuck it is that we fucked up y'all like this is the real shit. We it's are traumatized. We are horrified. Mm -hmm. They are killing us in the hospital and they are killing us in the motherfucking street. I yeah. forgot it was a goddamn pandemic. I forgot I haven't touched my father in the You literally do you, do you realize, hear me? Yeah. Do you realize so how like, much we're at, processing? At this moment, you know, trying to process yoga is a healing session. That's what this shit is about. We're not trying to sell, you know, no, it's religion, not fluff. no crack shit. No, it's not fluff. Like we go hard. And if you have consciously been seeing this, especially, you know, Adrian and I and our and our lives and going, because this is the way that we live, you know, trying to un trying to read self -heal. preserve preserve yourself because this world this, what it was built, what this country was built on, like, I think about it. I think about it before George died, after fucking Trayvon Martin. I think about it all the time about what this country was built on and how disgusted I am and how no one, literally no one, and here's the thing, what I want people to understand, I'm only, I want to be short with this. I do not want to elaborate on this, Lisa. I want people to understand that I, when I was born, I, I knew about it. Like, I didn't, I didn't, being born into whiteness and also being black and like being aware of your blackness like makes you terribly aware of your whiteness and what whiteness is. And whiteness is very insidious, okay? Like to believe at any point in time that you are superior to somebody because of the color of your skin, that is sick. That's sick. And it's, it doesn't matter if you date a black person, it doesn't matter if you marry, racism is 
sickness. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't, like, it doesn't matter. You have to truly, like, tr not just treat the symptoms of racism. You have to radiate that bitch chemotherapy, that motherfucker, and kill it. Because, kill it. and guess what? Black people cannot do that. We cannot do it. Unfortunately, we've asked nicely. We've not asked nicely. We've asked, we've, you know, like, we try to get along with y'all. We try, like, and it's not working. And I just feel like if you created the problem, you should solve the problem. I've always felt that way. I'll continue to, I'll continue to do the work that but I this, have to but do. But this is the problem, though, Adria, is that they don't have the, the skills to solve the problem. But the I'm going to keep, that's why we have to keep, that's why it's that, like. But, yeah, that's why we got to keep doing it because they're not able, they don't have the necessarily the, the skills to solve the problem. And now the trauma is so deep. So stay with me. Now the trauma is so I deep. Got something too. Okay. And outside of that, outside of the trauma being so deep, now we have these babies with a whole new level of trauma. So so you know, my motherfucking son can't leave the house. Let me just be real clear with you. My oldest one, like that's gone. He's he's gone. But my baby, I gotta keep him out of this shit. Do you understand? I have to keep him away because I I can't let him to be traumatized. He already has bloodlines of trauma that I'm that he got in the womb, Adria. That I've been trying to yoga out of him, pray out of him, who do out of him, right. crystal over him because of our ancestors and what they have been through. That my son already is born into trauma. So weird. now this healing circle can never fucking stop dog like it, it just cannot. has to get bigger because the layers are going are so thick and deep now and then if you if you didn't think these niggas was mad before if oh you i'm didn't pissed. think these niggas was mad before let me tell you something like this like we were on the phone and we were talking about how this feels different and i genuinely feel that way and also what I'll say is, like, Jamel just said it perfectly. They have the skill. They don't have the care. I feel like I feel like the, the same way that we're aware of what our ancestors went through and how that is literally in our DNA, it's in our cells. Like, we know, we know that the healing work that we do is necessary, right? I don't think that white people understand that if you come from – First of all, violence, genocide, massacres, bringing your children out to watch black bodies be lynched, that's also trauma. You cannot appropriate healing and think that you're going to ex ex exorcist out racism. There's something that white people need to do that, do you feel what I'm saying? Because they're trauma. That's, I'm concerned. I'm concerned. Like, I'm not trying to say racism is a mental illness in the sense that they're not accountable. But there's something very sick, something they, very sick about this notion in our country. And the sh we're not, I can't even, I can't get into it because I, I really can't get into it. There's something sick. White supremacy is, is deathly upon black and brown people. And if you give a fuck about human people at all, you would have no problem saying anything. It would be a reflex. Adrian, I would be concerned. I want to let the if there's white people on this live and all your white friends and all the white people, I'm deaf. I'm very, very concerned when I'm around white people that don't respond. That apathy, I'm. I like the ones that make it clear that they racist because then I'm like, okay, I know. But the ones that are neutral, it's quite startling and it's quite scary and and. It makes me very uncomfortable. And when I thought of Lululemon, I thought about my relationship with them. That's what it was rooted in was the silence was almost like, yeah, we see, but it, it's okay with us. You know, that's what it is. You I know? see, I see, but just that, you're being mind. traumatized. I'm sorry. You're where anyone watching that video is being traumatized. If you literally watch that video, close your phone and then never speak of it. It's being put down into your tissues, into your body. That's what racism is. Racism, you can, you, you're, you're born that way. Yes, white people are inherently racist. Yes, yes. my mother is white. White people are inherently racist. You have so, to, the same, way we, the same way we have trauma, my dad has Crohn's, I have Crohn's. Guess what I have to do? Heal my body to get the Crohn's up out of me. Listen, Adrian, it's interesting that you say I'm that. I'm sorry. Because with, no, 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 no. You Don't be sorry for this. I'm loving all this shit.
but just like you say that, but like my grandmother, like I didn't even know she was white. Like she, my grandmother was the the realest. Like she was regular with it. I never, I never even knew the kids in school had to tell me she was white. That's we how never I would prefer even, it to be. We never even spoke of it. And so when the kids in school, she picked me up, and when I went back to school, they like, oh, your grandma white. I'm like. No, she's just real, real light skin. What the fuck is y'all talking about? So I never got that vibe from her. And she kept us away or, well, anyway, her siblings weren't around. They didn't, they didn't fuck with us. So right. we were kept away from that. You know, it was, it was more like, no. So she didn't allow that. So I didn't get that in my, like, to see that from my family doing that to me directly. I saw it indirectly, but I didn't know them anyway. It, so it, it wasn't right. like it was, you know, it affected me. It's always more. very covert. It's always very covert. Like, you have to understand, like, a lot of white people, they're, you know, and I know this very well, is, like, I, I don't see color. And the right. problem with not seeing color is you've now invalidated an entire experience. Also, right. people die because of the color of their skin. So the fact that you're not seeing someone's color is a problem. The fact that you're not teaching your children that people die because of this is a problem. You need to be literally exercising out racism. You need to be talking about it damn near as much as we do. Like, I'm sorry, but this absolutely does. It affects us as a, as a humanity. Like, white people are predominantly the ones being like, I don't see color, we're all one. But then you won't speak out about the things that separate us. It's confusing. I'm confused. Like, Wait, look. And, so, look. Somebody said, my girlfriend said, and I know she's white. She said, I know me personally this week. I was so sad. I went into a cave. I didn't feel safe to talk to my to white people about this because I feel like it won't get solved, and which is false. Like, So, she's not going to be able to seek any. She's white, but she can't seek any type of conversation because it's, it's no need. What are they going to say? What's going to happen? So, my thing with that is... I think that white people partially the reason that they can't they don't like acknowledging privilege is because they don't understand what their privilege actually is. Like I think the first thing that you need to do is like read read books. Read that shit. Read books. Google shit. Educate yourself. So that way and guess what? I I talk to my my own mother and she doesn't get it sometimes. Yeah, you know how painful that is. I'm sorry. White people need to put themselves through the pain of having that conversation and it not getting solved. And you need to keep having the conversation. Keep going at it. Don't stop. Don't stop. Y'all didn't stop when y'all fucking shackled us up and brought us over. You didn't stop when you enslaved us. You didn't stop when Jim Crow came into play. You didn't stop when motherfucking Trump is in office. It's 2020. Y'all have not stopped. Y'all have perseverance. There's something about y'all that can persevere. Okay? Like, it's fucking crazy and I just want y'all to understand like you believe there's something complacent there's something complacent happening where it's like I don't believe I can solve this by having a conversation so you all stay quiet and that's what we're saying is the problem that's what you might have to be that white person in your friend group that gets kind of like outcasted and you you have to be it's like at a certain point you yeah have, but that comes down that to person. core values that, that now be, that, that this comes down values. to core values yes. now and you either you either are rooted in your core values to the point where you care so fucking much. Like, I'm not about to fuck with no racist white people. Like, you, but if you don't feel that way, you need to be questioning your own. That means that you haven't exercised something out of your own. So you might have felt sad, but guess what? I have no room for white tears in my cup. I have no room for your fragility. I love you, but I have no room for your fragility. I need you to boss the fuck up like we do every day. We're dealing with a pandemic and our brother just got killed on the street and we're here talking. We're here talking. We're not even fucking sleeping and we're here talking. So you can do it too, baby. Don't let that, it's, 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 it's that fragility don't work. There's a book about white fragility. So that should be the first book you order. I think that these conversations right there, that right there will tell it like, how do I, how do I get my words together? How do I figure out how to have these conversations? How do I become an ally so I can come in and help support and say these things? This is how you do it. You have to be that white person in your group that's going to stand up, that's going to say, no, that shit isn't right. 
don't do that. And that means we're not going to be friends anymore. And that means that I'm not going to talk to you anymore. And that means these relationships and these things now have to come to an end. So what it is really is it's scary as fuck. Because once you have to step the fuck up and show up in your true self and who you are and speak your truth and That's know that everyone else is going to judge you and not be cool with you about it. You have to be a very, look, I was watching Amanda Seals last night. Let me tell you what this, she said. And this is why I fucking love her. She was like, and she, she said, and, and actors and stuff, she was like, stop holding them accountable up to like to get up and to speak out because that's not what this is about. She said, you to be an activist, do you know how fucking strong you got to be to be an activist? To, to be able to be out there and put yourself on the front line and to be in the streets and to have these conversations and to risk. I watched a documentary on activism from the Panthers kids. My girlfriend, Kamasi, um, Kamasi, he did a documentary years ago. I watched it to shine at the Black Madonna. And those children of the revolution were hurt, baby, because their mm. parents wasn't there. Mm. Like, Tupac, this is how you know. Tupac, a baby of the revolution. But we're talking about all of these, you know, influential people whose families were receiving death threats, who one of these girls, like, she was molested while her mother and her father were out there fighting the journey, trying to free Black people. This revolution is, is it's strong. Like, th this, not the, 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 this not for the weak. So if you don't feel like you can fight, then you should probably shut the fuck up. But that's I, my problem, I don't though. I don't know but that's my problem. Say, though, Andrea, but here's but my thing. There's levels. Through. Here's my thing. There's levels to this shit. The, the very first place that you start, you dismantle it in, your, in yourself. This man, I'm sorry. That, it's real. It's step by step. Here's the thing. We might not see it in our lifetime. I've already accepted but that's my that. Point, is that. I've already accepted that. But right, my, yes. my people thing aren't is, gonna be able to do that. Yeah, like you have to, you have to start. Like you cannot self pity or feel like, oh my god, what can I do? When it's as simple as like making a post or like calling out your white friends. Like, what's the, what do y'all think about this? Like, check this out. Okay, it's probably like you said, fear of judgment and rocking the boat. Thank you for saying the silence is neutral, but doesn't help change the world. That's it doesn't. It doesn't. Like, Thank let me you. tell you something. Thank you. Let me yes. tell you something. Like, yes. I just feel like if you wouldn't be friends with somebody that, like, was an abuser, like, if you wouldn't be friends with somebody that was, like, into domestic violence, you wouldn't be friends with somebody that was into, like, killing dogs, you wouldn't accept that in your life. These motherfuckers that found that the cats show on Netflix, whatever, Don't you know, these people, these people like hunted this man down for killing these cats. And, you know, it's amazing the way, and this is white on white hunting. Okay. This is white people hunting other white people for doing shit. So I've seen it done. And I think that y'all need to have passion like that, but you need to have, but you need to understand that. I would get curious about why it's hard for you. Like, why isn't it bringing something up in you? That's a trauma, no, that. re that's no, a trauma that. response. But this is just for white people in general. Okay. That's a trauma response. That's an apathetic response to murder. You should be disgusted when you see that. You should be disgusted. She by said, I already seeing... have abuse in my past, and it brought up again for me when I saw it. Angel, yes. That's exactly what this is. So this is why. So say that. Yes. So this is why. God, and it I could just be a statement. That's why I said, like I said, what did I want from Lululemon? All I said was a statement. Donation to the Acknowledgement. You don't have to go out and riot. I'm not asking anybody to, like, do something that they don't feel comfortable with in terms of, like, their bodily, physical safety. But it causes you no harm. You take no L's in standing out against something that is wrong. Like, racism is not right like at the simplest level racism is fucked up like it's horrible. would you want to be treated the way black people are treated in this country no so do you want to get COVID-19 no so you stay your ass at home so you speak out against this bullshit especially if you're white you live like I just feel like the silence is what I got a problem with the racist motherfuckers I feel like okay you made you've made it clear and they'd be out here with AK-47s and shit. 
She said, a brown man almost killed me by choking me out, and I saw that and saw myself. Okay, but what I'm saying is the trauma I'm talking about is trauma from the history of white people. I'm not talking about trauma in your personal life, because guess what? Black people are also being traumatized in their personal lives. Then we have to go out into the world and get traumatized. You don't have to go out into the world and get traumatized. That was in your personal life. I'm here with you. I love you. I want to keep reiterating that. It's the trauma of white people that I'm talking about that I don't, it, I don't need it to spark something in your personal life. I need it to spark, like, if you're not feeling something because that's a white man on top of a black man and you know why it's happening, if that don't do nothing to you, you got to get real curious about your state of apathy and your state of empathy. And I don't know about therapists that talk about race, but maybe that's something that needs to come out into the open where white people are getting therapy for racism. Like you're, it's in you. You don't, you might not even, your silence is an indication that it's in you. White your, people are getting therapy for racism. I think that they absolutely need to have yes. a fundamental and understanding you, that you, know what, you watch really your, your ancestors lynched people and you sat and watched there. I just saw on the news a couple of weeks ago of them doing a mock lynching and there's little kids standing around. That's, that's what trauma. That's what that's just a, said, the kids. So look, when we, when we do, so if y'all, so y'all, of course y'all don't know because this is shit that's happening behind the scenes, but we're doing something this month and it's coming, but I think that's what we of got the work things. to do. Yeah, we, we got, we got so much work to do, so much work to do um, for black and brown people and the education of, um, of our white allies to bring them in so they can understand and or other ways that we can all work together to help. So these are all important things that need, these conversations have to be had. So with Adria, like you said, um, if it is, I'm talking about this because now I feel like this is going into our conversation when we just got off the phone and everything, but just someone there being able to speak, how do you become the proper ally? You know, how do you say that? And my girl, Allison, when I talked to her from Harlan Run, she was teaching that class. They did a thing, but for someone, for people to understand, what does that mean? You know, so how, how can you um, bring, so uh, Randy, I know, I know, I know. So this is the problem. I feel, so what Randy said is I'm not educating shit. Everything ain't for everybody. Listen, there's levels to this shit. Like, to dismantle the system of racism, white people will need to develop a new system. A new system. They'll have to, so the same way that they developed the Constitution, they'll have to rewrite the bitch, okay? That shit is outdated. Get that shit out of here. You'll have right. to literally start at the ground level in which racism was conceptualized, which was the fucking, whatever the paperwork was, when they were all Yankees and all the fucking yes. shit. I didn't do well in school. I don't yes. give a fuck about that shit. They would have to start there. You'd have to start at rewriting. Like, this shit is so deep. No, that's why I'm like, deep. that's we why have to I keep encouraging zero. people, just start with yourself, baby. Because this shit, you would have to literally, white people would literally have to create new systems. You would have to, public education. We go into the public education system, and that's why I got from Randy too today, and I was like, all oh, this shit is fake. The grades are fake because... All that shit that they're teaching is just a reinforcement of that is knowledge made for like white people. It's not. It's not a like the the textbooks are not. It's updated. not for us. Well, first, outside. Well, of it's not for like. Not, it's not for humanity. It's not it's like not universal education. It's not even accurate. All the it's time. It's not accurate. You know it's what I'm not, saying? I mean, so th what we were raised on is not even an accurate representation. So whereas though we were always thought Christopher Columbus and these these great days, and it's like no, these are all fuck days. Like no, these were all. They were literally. Days. These were all murder days. The we Boston Tea Party, the Boston Tea Party was a riot. Why did they make it seem like it was like this sweet, suave shit? This is my thing. Is like the only way is to implement new systems. It's the only fucking way. The first system that you can easily implement is in your own home. I grew up where race was talked about quite often, but it was very negative. It was extremely negative. So I grew up with a bias. Tell me what of, you mean by tell me what you mean by negative. What was said like my grandparents were, they were racist, you know, and my mom really like separated from her family in a great way. And I would just remember going over to family gatherings and being really uncomfortable. Um, and my dad was also like self-hating black man. And that was confusing as a black woman. You know, he, he, I've never seen him date a black woman. You know, I've never, and he would always say, like, y'all just a bunch of, like, white kids. He would reject us, you know? 
that was very toxic. So when I got older, yeah. And then I moved from Inkster, a little ghetto, to fucking Wall Lake, where there was like two other black people in my in my class. You know, there were things said to me like, oh my God, I love your skin color. What are you? This is back when I was like, well, how old am I now? 20, about to be 27. It's back when I'm like 11 or 12 years old. What are you? And I'd be like, well, my dad's brown and my mom is like white. I had never even thought of race before in that way. And they're like, oh, I didn't even know that could happen. This is not that long ago. It's not that long ago. And I'm a child. Like, I'm a child. And then you get older and your identity is constantly questioned, right? And so I grew up with a bias that mostly towards white people. And then I got to, you know, I developed a deeper relationship with my white mother. You know, my white mom, you know, and I love my mom. Bless my mama's heart. You know, but my own mom has told me that she can't relate to me because she's white. That's how insidious whiteness is, that you could push someone out of your body, that you could grow a human. And then once they're here and they're, they're full and they're brown, that you might not feel like you can even relate to them because of whiteness. It has, like, we gotta, I, I, so, we, so even, right, so even those layers, Adria, so I, thank you for all this fucking honesty, dog, like, oh, you're so because, like, that is all just, just really real and honest, so in saying that, though, we, we have so many layers to do, and so then I guess the so question much. is, is where, where do we start, and we start at fucking ground zero, dog, this is, this is where we're starting, we're starting, I'm starting right level. here, up in right, this house, right every day, Every day, every day, I get on this mat every single day. I, I think about what can I offer my people. Every single day, I think about what can I offer myself. Every day, I grieve. I'm grieve. Like, I want everyone to know, like, grieve this shit. Like, my biggest thing for my people that I want is for us to keep processing. I don't want us to get stuck. Because when that shit gets put into our bodies, this adversity, this trauma, this is what causes us disease. This is what causes us health issues later on in life. This is what causes us to have to go to the doctor more. Then they don't care about us when we go to the doctor. Because then we die at a higher rate. You know, and, and at the end of the day, y'all, like, we, we have what we need. They've made us, they've set us up. I mean, unfortunately, that's just, we started, we started at the back, literally. So my biggest thing is, like, what we can do is yes. self-preservation. Even when you like the even when it's so overwhelming in you, you know, like you can breathe. Like and and it sounds so stupid sometimes when I say it, I'm like, these they think it's fluff, but they not understand it. They like, don't understand. And they you don't can understand. literally self regulate. Like you can literally start to change the chemistry in your brain. You can change how you care about yourself. You can get like it, it's crazy. It's crazy and our only job is to keep working on ourselves first and foremost and then to keep putting it out there. And also just racism is, it makes me, it disgusts me. It makes me not want to have kids. It makes me, it worries me. It, it brings all of these negative notions into a life that I believe belongs to me, that I deserve to be happy. And I deserve, and my brothers and my sisters who are brown and dark skin and black, like they, we deserve peace. And I'd rather just deal with the natural selection of life and not this shit that gets invoked on us so violently. Look, look, look what's really affecting me and making me emotional. So I feel like I'm about to have to smoke with you because now we can't okay. talk into how we... we first of all, how long no, have listen, we been on this live? You know they're going to cut it off. Know, listen, it'll tell me. I want to make sure, but it'll, it'll tell me. But why this is so hard, Adrian, because I remember... You know, when and I feel like I'm a I'm I'm an auntie now. You know, I'm I'm older, so I, I'm a, I'm more of an elder. You know, at this point of my life, right? But I remember your age, and I remember saying the same thing. You know, and I, I honestly feel like right now, like I'm having a conversation with myself, and so it hurts inside because it's the same. It's the same you know, conversation. It's, it's the same conversation. It's the same conversation that I've had to have with. I've raised three sons, you know, and I've I've had to have this same conversation with every single one of my sons, and I have to tell my sons how to protect themselves and get scared. Like if if my kids get pulled over by the police, I just put me on speakerphone. You know, I had to teach. So this is things we have to do, you know, in order to teach and how to move through when your kids get to driving and these babies. You know, when you get in the car, my son, he, two of his aunties is attorneys. Let me, I have an attorney. Speak to my lawyer, please. Speak to my lawyer, please. That's all. Yes, officer. 
no officer speak to my lawyer please put your phone do you know how terrifying that is on any regular given day listen and then i have to teach mothers we have to teach our black babies these in order to survive you know and pray that my sons come home to me because they drive their own cars you know they they go about their life in this own way so that's all i can do so and that's traumatizing for me as a mother to have to tell this or have to tell my 11 year old or just like you saying this so my generation the generation before that and even my kids all been called niggas at school all of them even an 11 year old i have and he, and do you know how long he, he ain't even been in school that long right so that's so this this programming goes into the house yeah. but it's almost like and respectfully i don't i don't know how to say this without saying fucked up but it's kind of like you got to kind of just get rid of all the fucked up people like in one bow and just kind of start from scratch because I don't know, it's it's easier to build. You can start any day out of the week teaching your kids that, first of all, race exists. Because here's the thing, if you never teach, here's my thing, right? Like, you have to go, you have to teach your sons that they might die by the hands of the police. White people need to teach their children that there's something in, that we, the same way they did in Germany with the Jews, that there's something about white people where we, we believe, like, we believe that brown people and black people were beneath us. We believe that is that is our history, and that is not what we believe in. Because when you don't talk to your kids about racism, they now can form their own ideas based on society. And society is fucked up. It's 2020, and it's still happening. It's still so fucked up. So you actually have way more control than you believe. That nature and nurture in the home is way more powerful when you are when you're really when you really give a fuck but at the end of the day i just don't think white people think it's a problem enough they don't. and and it's fright that frightens me that it i think that's when we feel well i'll speak for myself most hopeless but at the end of the day i just feel like if i have capacity i'm going to i'm going to do what i got to do i'm not if you're weary i want you to be weary I, if you're if you're sad, I want you to be sad, but be sad for a, a minute, and then you gotta get back up. And we have to keep we got shit to do. We mm-hmm. have shit to do, and also like our kids' kids deserve healing. And at the end of the day, like life is really for me about like I'm here to work through shit. That's mm-hmm. just what it is for me. I'm here to work through my my parents' shit. I'm here to work through. Some of the shit I got ain't mine. And I'm like, what the mm-hmm. fuck, right? But I have to, and I find joy in that. I find joy in, like, healing. Like, mm-hmm. I love when I, you know me, I love when I unlock a new level. And I feel we got like... A, we got a minute 27. Keep talking. All right. It's just, it's a marathon. It's a marathon. And I just, I want to say, like, I love y'all. And Lisa, thank you for your support, for your love. You've changed my life, hands down. Um, completely, you're an angel to me. And I just, I am who I am. And that's just what it is. Look, we about to shine this light. We got about another minute. How are we want to own this out? What you want to do? Go ahead. You, I mean, you, I'll, I'll probably, I just want to kind of, I okay, just want to be go. here with y'all and let so this then, bitch. So then be here. When the bitch end, I'm going to have to hit end because I got to make sure I save it. But let's do an omen. We're going to do some singing balls. So hey, Adria. My <sighs> omen ain't that strong. Okay. That's okay. We'll, we'll do it together. Ready? Okay. Oh. Um, um, Again. Oh. I like how that feels in my pelvic floor. Okay, I'm gonna save it. I gotta get in the shower because I'm hot, I'm sleepy, and I'm pissed, and I love you, and I'll talk to you soon. Post it to your IGTV. Right now. Right now.